Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining us recorded. If you're joining us today at 7 a.m. on Thursday, February the 10th, you're live. If you're joining us at any other time, uh, I bet I should put the year. If you're joining us on Thursday, <laughs> February the 10th, 2022 at 7 o'clock, you are live. If you're joining at other time, you're recorded. And we like recorded as well, so please drop some comments, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag share to get out of your page. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. And if my eyes look a little weird, it's because allergies are whipping my bottom. Uh, it is not COVID. Uh, it is not Ebola. It is not the Ebonic plague. It is not the flu. It is not... He's been crying and living in depression, uh, and, the, and I know that because I, I'm, I know what these allergies do to me. I think I sneezed uh, 10,000 times the day before yesterday, and if Brandy's on here, she can uh, collaborate with that and confirm that that is, in fact, a non-exaggerated number. Good morning, Annette. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Audra. Good morning, Ricky. What's going on? Good morning, everybody. Hi, Tasha. What you guys doing? So, let's open up the the mailbag a little bit. Uh, yeah, not the Rona or the COVID. So, this weekend, we're going to take another step in the sermon series, Discovering God, towards the tree of life and away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees in the garden, and as long as we continue to read the account of creation in Genesis as merely historical, we are missing the foundation it laid that you and I have built our systems on, our patterns on, our culture on, our faith on. Come on. This, this, this knowledge of good, this knowledge of evil that we think that because we know good, we have the power to do good. And because we can, uh, you know, are aware of evil, we have the strength to avoid it, which is not true. While all the while the tree of life is sitting here, it is active, it is powerful. Uh, Jesus is, is issuing a, an invitation to us to draw closer to him. I can't tell you how many people have told me that their quiet times have taken on different meanings. I can't tell you how many people have told me that they just can't get through a minute or two minutes or five minutes without their mind whining and squealing and screaming and them being, you know, distracted, lose focus, wondering if they're doing it right, questioning themselves, because, hey, that, that alone... That alone should uh, be confirmation enough that your soul and spirit are different. That your soul gets upset, your mind, your will, and emotions get loud when you try to get still and be quiet in the presence of the Lord. Because, listen, your soul and your body, they... uh. They're fighting each other. They're, they're trying to hurt each other. Emotions attack flesh, and flesh attacks emotions. And they're trying to keep you from God. So, as we're going back to the garden, and as we're looking at the way we do things, the intentions behind what we do, uh... One of the things that is going to become very clear is that it sounds like we're always attacking the soul and we're always shaming the body. And that's part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. However, and I want to I'm trying to go slow with this. However, there is a place for your soul. You know, this morning, I wrote out on Facebook, and I just want to read you what I wrote in case you didn't see it. 
because it, it leads into what we're talking about today and this weekend. With so much talk about the Spirit, and this is what I wrote out on the Pray First page, and this is what I wrote out on uh, the Cross Point Family page, with so much talk about the Spirit, where does that leave our soul? Is our soul bad? Is it good? Or should we embrace our soul? Just what function does our soul have that we need to lean into? What function does our soul have, our mind, our will, and our emotion? What function of our soul do we need to lean into? I had a question yesterday asking about selfish, selfishly motivated prayers. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. When you begin to dive into your spirit and you begin to practice prayer and worship and things in the spirit, your soul is going to accuse you of a lot of things. Your soul is, is somewhat of a Jekyll Hyde, okay? It's really a neutral that is, it's not good and it's not bad. It's, it's a neutral that is being impressed on by what is going on around you. Your experiences inform your soul. But on the other side, your soul is being impressed on by the spirit. Okay, so you can be led according to your flesh. Your soul can be led according to your flesh. Or your soul can be led according to the Spirit. As many are as led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Okay, I'm going to read my statement again, and then I'm going to read some verses. I'm going to try to set up a foundation for this weekend's message because it is so important when it involves worship. With so much talk about the Spirit, I'm repeating this, where does that leave our soul? Is our soul bad? Is our soul good? Or should we embrace our soul at all? Our mind, our will, our emotions. Just what function does our soul have that we need to lean into? Okay, let's continue to develop the fact that you are a three-part person. And where you struggle is in your mind, your will, and your emotions. Where we often struggle is in our physical body. Why? Because those two things crave death. It's the only thing that will save them. Our spirit is alive. If we've trusted in Jesus Christ, our spirit is alive. So we have your body, our soul, our spirit. Your soul has been in control the longest. Your body has been in control the second longest. And your spirit came in control when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And your body and your soul are in rebellion to the perfect saved spirit. Because your soul is being saved... Your body will be saved, but your spirit is saved. So when you're having a hard day, when you're having a hard time, when you're struggling with lustful thoughts, when you're struggling with uh, oppressive thoughts or depression, those things are going on in your soul. It, they have been impressed upon by the things going on around you, by the things that you consume through media, music, things of that nature. Uh, hurts, pains, abuses, also joys, tribulations, uh, suckers, candy bars, whatever makes you happy. They have all these uh, pleasure triggers and hurt triggers and pain receptors. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. It's directly tied to your brain that's been affected by so much even before you were born. Uh, but your spirit is clear, all right? So how can we trust? What do we lean into? How do we use our soul? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 is just more confirmation 
that we're separate and that each part of us has a function. For the Word of God, Hebrews 4.12, for the Word of God is living and operative. It performs operations. It is active. Other translations use the word active. For the Word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God here is the logos, the written Word of God. The written Word of God. I said, if you do not want to be manipulated, if you do not want to be led astray, if you want to know the voices that you're hearing, are they from God? You need to be in the written word because you will never be able to discern who's talking to you. You will never be able to discern what voices you're hearing. You will never hear the spoken word of God until you learn to read the written word of God. It will show you, it will tell you, it will inform you who's speaking to you, who's directing you, who's guiding you, who are you hearing? Is it just me? Is this just me or is this God? Is, is this just a feeling? Is this, is this the enemy? The Word of God is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even between the dividing of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow it is able to discern the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. I mean, the writer of Hebrews breaks it down even further, like we needed to be more confused. The, the soul is the mind, will, and emotions, and now he's breaking down the body in two of its numerous parts, and he talks about the joints and the marrow. The joints and the marrow are physical joints and marrow, our body, sinew, bone, marrow, flesh, veins, organs. But he takes it down a little bit further and he says between the joints and the marrow. So even our physical body can be discerned and can be separate and have different functions. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our spirit, our joints and our marrow are able to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. In other words, our heart has thoughts sometimes come on and our hearts have intentions and sometimes they're not the same the joints and the marrow are very physically connected in our body yet they are distinctly different and they can be separated our body soul and spirit are also closely related and parts of our overall being but they're distinct and can be separated in the same way, come on, I know this one today seems a little tedious. In the same way that our soul and spirit, come on. In the same way our soul and spirit can be divided by the word of God. In the same way, just like our joints and marrow can be divided, though they're closely related, our soul and spirit can be divided by the word of God, so that you can say, okay, this is the function of my soul, and this is the function of my spirit. And I'm going to give you an example of this uh, a little bit later on in this conversation this morning. So the, the different functions of our soul and spirit are these. Are you ready? Hashtag spirit. The function of our spirit. Come on. The function of our spirit is related to the spiritual realm. Spirit things. Oh, if we could actually see what's going on around us in the spirit. I believe, I believe that our loved ones are in the spirit and just on the other side of me. That they are around me. That those who are with Christ, with God, are surrounding me. That paradise, that heaven, is a breath, a blink, and on the other side of this. I don't believe it's way up there, way off yonder. Uh, I believe that it is on the other side of me, and it is why I am surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. They're all around me. The function of our spirit is in the 
in the spiritual realm. There is warfare in the spirit. There are angels in the spirit. They're all around us. There, there was this song I used to sing as a child. I can feel the mighty something all around the brush of angels' wings. I, they feel glory in this place. When you get to a place in your spirit where you're with God and He's communicating with you, the Spirit is right there beside you, but it is a spiritual realm. The Spirit enables us. Here it is. The Spirit is a two-way radio that enables us to contact and receive God. Our soul can't. It's still broken. It's still bruised. It's still dirty. It's still sinful. It's still lost, but it is being saved. Our body, it's still broken. It's still dying. It's still dirty. It's still sin-filled. It's still lost, but it will be saved. The spirit part of me, that God resurrected from the dead, in my case, 1989, and said, Son. And my spirit would <laughs> breathe for the first time. I was a teenager when my spirit breathed for the first time, and the function was to connect to and receive God. Whew, this is so important for for what we're going to talk about worship and, and how you lean into your soul and what, what part does your soul play in this. That's our spirit. John 4, 24 shows us, John 4, 24, that our spirit is able to contact and connect God, to God. God is spirit, John 4, 24. And those who worship him, worship him. Everybody hashtag worship because that's where we're heading this weekend. God is spirit. If you're worried about how you sound, he doesn't hear your sound. He doesn't hear your, he may hear your physical voice, but that's not worship to him. People sing all the time. He only hears living spirits sing in worship. It's not your voice. It's the thoughts and intents of your heart coming from your spirit. We'll talk about that in just a second. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God being spirit means his substance, his being is spirit. Our spirit is the part of our being that corresponds. It connects. Come on. It connects, it receives, it corresponds with God. It worships and has the ability to contact, fellowship, and worship him. Those who worship God must worship him in spirit. Woo. John 3, 6 says, That which is born of the spirit is spirit. There's a capital S. That which is born of the capital S, Holy Spirit, has now had the spirit of man be resurrected by him. And the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us. When we are born again, this is important, the spirit in our human spirit, come on, is the Holy Spirit. It's not in our soul, but he's housed in our body. I'm giving you like probably a year or two of theology right now. But it's recorded and you can go back and watch this a thousand times. When we were born again, we were born of the Spirit into our human spirit. It is the Holy Spirit, but not in our soul. We received the Lord and we came alive in our spirit. It's why you're going to go to heaven and not hell. Okay? So what about our soul? Our soul is who we are. It's our personality. It's composed of our mind, our will, and our emotions. You all know that. God created us with these faculties. Come here. So we could express him. God created us with a soul, mind, will, and emotions so we could express him 
and express ourselves to Him. Worship is love expressed. My soul is born and it is, it is, it is an enemy of God. My, my body is born and it is an enemy of God. My soul and my body will have to die to be saved. My spirit, my spirit is saved. woo Man, I'm, I'm saved. My body and soul carries grief and shame and guilt and condemnation and does and thinks bad things. But my soul is created to express my heart, to express myself. And then God's word is able to interpret and divide the thoughts and intentions of the heart through the interpreter of the Holy Spirit. My soul expresses worship to God. <laughs> I hope you're hearing this. Our soul is who we are. Our soul is our personality. It's composed of our mind, our will, and emotions. God created our mind, our will, and our emotions, and our soul so that we could express ourselves. <sighs> he gave us the tools to express our spirit before our spirit was even expressible because it was dead. In my sin, Christ died for me so that I could express my worship to Him, my love to Him, that I could, through the Spirit, impress upon my soul, soul, magnify the Lord with me. My, my soul in me is, is, is part of me, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't magnify the Lord on its own. I have to tell my soul, mind, will, and emotions. I know you don't feel like worshiping. I know you feel heavy. I know you feel oppressed. I know you feel guilt, shame, condemnation, and fear because you just keep eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you would just taste and see, God says, that I am good, that I am living water, that if you drink of me, you'll never thirst again. You will tap into, you will connect to the Spirit of God. You your spirit will worship and it will express itself through your soul, your personality, your mind, your will, your emotions. So soul within me, magnify the Lord with me. Who am I talking about? Soul, I want you to magnify the Lord with my spirit. Body, I know you don't feel like it, but you're going to magnify the Lord with me. Body, you're going to lift up the Lord with me. Body, you're going to glorify the Lord with me. Body, I am not controlled controlled by my flesh. I am not controlled by my soul. I am not led by my flesh. I am not led by my soul. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And Spirit-led souls express worship to God. Spirit-led bodies express worship to God. Spirit-led people and children of God can't help but control their soul, control their body, and worship God. Your soul is neutral. It acts based on what outside force is exerting itself on it. What outside force is exerting on your soul? Is it Yellowstone? Give me a break. Is your outside forces that are exerting on your soul pornography? Come on, guys. Is the outside forces that are exerting on your soul filth? Is the outside forces that are exerting on your soul Halloween, death, and the celebration of evil spirits? Come on, guys. Is the outside forces that are exerting on your soul pain, suffering, hate, anger, bitterness, and fear? That's the wrong dead gum tree. Is the outside force that is exerting itself on your soul the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead? I promise you. That that's the tree of life. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me give you the example and, and send you on your merry culture way to be impressed upon. You can't have death, fear, impressed upon your soul and it not affect your worship. Because it's the wrong tree. 
If God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, which spirit is that? Which spirit is impressing on your soul? And Mary said, my soul, listen, listen to what Mary says. Listen to what Mary says. She just, the Holy Spirit is just, breathe. The Holy Spirit just, let it be done according to your will. Mary says she is impregnated by the Holy Spirit. He goes, and, and not only did her spirit come alive, another little spirit named Jesus Christ came alive in her. And, and she, this prayer of Mary is really her conversation with Elizabeth in Luke chapter 40. Chapter 1, verse 46 and 47, we see both functions of the spirit and the soul. Here it is. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has exalted in God, my Savior. My spirit, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My spirit has been saved, Mary says, and it causes my soul to magnify him. I'm going to read it again. Mary said, after the Holy Spirit breathes on her, comes alive in her, she's impregnated by God, Jesus Christ is growing in her womb, my soul magnifies, expresses, enlarges. My mind, my will, and my emotions are magnifying the Lord. My spirit is rejoicing in God who just saved me. Let it be done according to what? Your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. The ability to cut between the joints and the marrow, the thoughts and intentions of your heart, the soul and the spirit. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit exalts in my God, my Savior. To magnify means to enlarge. To enlarge, express something that has been hidden for everyone to see. Worship that is not expressed is not worship. And love that is not expressed is not love. You cannot keep love and worship in your heart. That is merchandising. You're keeping something that doesn't belong to you and it got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person listening and every person watching that we would understand that just like Mary's praise was issued from her spirit and expressed through her soul, our praise is issued from the spirit but expressed through our soul. Just like Mary's worship was issued from her spirit and expressed through her soul, our worship is issued from our spirit and must be expressed through our soul. You don't ask for worship. You demand it. Lord, show us how to worship. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. I love you guys. If you have all these outside forces, come on, exerting themselves on your mind, your will, and the emotion, you need to ask yourself why. What are you magnifying? What are you allowing in, in, in you that you shouldn't be allowing there? What spirit? What spirit is impressing on your soul? Not all spirits are from God. Spirit of fear, spirit of anger, spirit of hate, spirit of python. There's at least one third of the angels fell. And those spirits are impressing. And boy, are they deceptive. Love you guys. Hey, Rita, we'll continue praying for your sister, absolutely. Love you all. Bye-bye.